20 machines all being assembled brand new. That is a lot of money. A lot of money sitting here. One seven ninety eight. Seven ninety eight. This is ultra class. It's as big as it gets. I saw Finning sell 168 798 haul trucks and I said I want to go see that so we contacted our friends with Finning in Canada they connected with us with our friends here in in Chile now and we're at their La Negra facility where they are setting up these trucks they are built by Caterpillar they're put on trucks they're sent to Houston they're put on boats from Houston they're sent to Antofagasta the port here in the city we just spent the night at they're brought in pieces by truck to here to the La Negra site and then there's 80 technicians just in this one area alone building these trucks to get them prepared for the mine site. The difference between this versus Caterpillar's uh, flagship ultra class truck, the 797F, is the drivetrain system. This is an electric drive truck, so you'll see that circle bit there and the electrical cabinets on the on the deck of the truck there what happens with this truck is it uses a diesel engine like the 797 but that's where it stops it takes that power and rather than using it to drive the drivetrain it turns it into electricity which then drives electric motors which drives the truck it can haul more, not because it's bigger, but because that system that drives it weighs a little less so it can then accommodate that additional weight within the bed of the truck. So it can haul about 10 tons more. This is about a 410 ton truck, whereas the 797 is about a 400 ton truck. This is ultra class. It's as big as it gets. For some history, Caterpillar originally unveiled the truck around 2019 when I saw it. That was pretty cool. I was there by accident. They had two trucks in Wyoming being tested. I believe there might have been two more in Chile. Then there were definitely two more in the oil sands. But this by far is the biggest package to date. These trucks do really well. They're electric drive in this dry environment. They don't do as well in the oil sands environment where your underfoot conditions are oftentimes soft and variable. Quick! But in the Atacama Desert, where we are right now, it in some places hasn't rained in 200 years. It's always dry. It's always hard rock because it's copper mining. So these are the perfect trucks for this application. We're here for the trucks, but casually they have a 994K getting built. And oh yeah, they have two more over there getting built too. <laughs> this is a crazy place. There's big equipment everywhere. That's, that's the biggest loader Caterpillar makes right there. That's amazing. A 994K on blocks. D11. I am telling everybody around here that I'm on this truck, so don't do anything with it. You too. I'm in the buddy seat of a new 798 AC. Fire suppression, dispatch, display for everything going on within the truck, heated and cooled seat, steering wheel. There's no radio. No radio. Necesito mi música cuando <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Mane Har. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so they are gonna put one in. I called this the spinny bit earlier because that's what it is. It is a spinny bit, but what it actually does is it dissipates the energy created under braking as the electric motors help this truck brake. Um, that energy comes out of here in the form of hot air. That is essentially wasted energy as of now, but in talking to them future state, when these trucks have more batteries on them, you'll be able to take this energy that's dissipated here, recover it and put it back into this truck to make it more efficient future state, just like a Formula One car. So they have two shops on site, four bays each. This is where they do the smaller work from 793 trucks to blades, to the wheel dozers, to the track dozers. So this is all of the, here, the, the smaller, the smaller stuff. Once per week, they're shipping trucks out of here every Friday. That's why we scheduled the week we did was last week was the very first truck out of here. This week is the second truck. I wanted to make sure they ironed out the wrinkles for us to, to show up here. That's the second truck. They just washed it. They're performing their final checks before it leaves Finning here. The truck's gonna drive right here. It'll leave Finning's facility. They'll stop it. They'll talk to the transport company and then they'll drive it a little bit further where they're gonna be loading it onto the trailer, which is what we'll see later this afternoon. Now we've gone across the street to another finning facility here where they work on undercarriages for shovels, they work on other shovel components. And then the shop behind me is where they repair beds and they assemble the beds for the haul trucks. So this is welding fabrication right behind me. Let's go and check it out. We have both repairs and new beds. So that is a new bed for one of the 798s that we've been checking out across the street. And then this is a repair for a 797F. So they're going in there. I heard them air arcing. They're cutting out all of the bad parts and then they'll rebuild that bed. So it's as good as new and we'll send it back out to the mine. I was wrong, go figure, it's a 793 bed. But the cool thing is you can see it hasn't been painted yet. You can see where it's been welded. So the bed section is in three pieces and then that top rock guard is a fourth piece. If you look at all the places it's been welded, they weld it on one side, they flip it over, and now they're welding the other side. This is how they show up. So this is the 798 bed. The 798 bed actually only comes in two pieces. So those are two halves that they'll then marry. They bolt it together to get it in alignment. They'll weld it and they'll flip it over, cut the bolts off, weld it again. While we were checking out the bed process, they brought the 798 over here that we saw earlier. Now there's two tires missing on the back so they can fit the trailer through. They pulled it over here. We're on kind of the side of the road, I think. They pulled that trailer underneath the truck and then they articulate. I honestly don't know how the trailer works, but the trailer goes up somehow, lifting the entire truck up as it goes, which then gets it on that trailer they have to get it perfectly balanced, perfectly centered for the trip tomorrow. And then once it's squared away, they'll drive a little bit more, leave it for the night, and we'll pick it up again tomorrow to see it actually driving along. 